Praise God, praise God. How are you guys doing tonight? Let me see if, if I turn off some of these lights that you can really see me. I got it lit up in here. I'm talking about lit. I got it lit, huh? All right. Praise God. Praise God. That is better. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. My type my title tonight is actually generational choices, not curses. Everybody talk about curses, but God say that it's actually a choice. You get a choice in this matter. Oh, come on, somebody. How do you go ahead, press tag and share? Because I've never had it put to me the way God put it tonight. He said that it's generational choices. He said it, it, it's not curses. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes, there are generational curses that are passed down only if you make the choice. Come on, somebody. Put that in the comments. If only if you make a choice. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the power of God. And I ain't even started up in here. Let me tell you what God is saying to me. He's okay. Basically, and, and I'm gonna be transparent because I have to in order to teach this thing the way I need to teach this thing. In my family, we had certain things that before my generation, the, you know, the generation before me, my grandfather, his grandfather, his grandfather. Okay, so I say it stops with me. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. That means I made a choice. See, so many people, you, you know, they're buying in. Oh, it has to be that way. No, it doesn't. It can stop with you, thus said the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. I didn't wait past it. Today is day four. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'm sorry. I'm on a roll. I feel a part of the Holy Ghost. Day four. I pray that you are pressing in. But that's what God want me to talk to you and I tonight about generational choices you don't have to do what your mama did you don't have to do what your daddy did you don't have to do what your sister doing you don't hear what i'm saying but it is a choice now let me tell you what he told me to tell you point blank hallelujah or oh, this, this going this going to hit i'm telling you right now but i mean by that is because true who to date Y'all notice that? They try to tell you who to date. Well, you know, this person is not. You have to ask God. Oh, I'm going here. What college to attend? Oh, am I in, some, in somebody? Hallelujah. Where to live? What church to attend? What fraternity or sorority to be in? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. What, um, what else? Which is not of God. Y'all know, y'all know that stuff is Greek stuff, right? Well, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, and God said that. You have to understand even what neighborhood. So God was saying, he said, Deanna, my people have to understand. I'm going to quote a scripture, Matthew 6, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness in this hour, in this moment, in this time. Let me tell you what's happening. The world is tainting the church. Instead of us changing the world, the world has come into the church and told us A, B, C, D. And everybody had love to have it so. Oh, come on, somebody. You have to stand for something in this hour or you will fall for anything, thus saith the Lord. Let me tell you something. I need you to hear me very, very clearly. Whatever you feed on the most, that is who you are. If you feed on flesh, which is gossip, mess, all kind of stuff that you ain't got no business, then that's why you flesh. But if you feed on the word of God, come on somebody, hallelujah. If you feed on this word, if you get in this word, oh, come on somebody, hallelujah. Let me tell you what's wrong with the new church. The new church say it don't take all that. Oh, I beg to differ. That's the only way you can stay connected to God is if you do all that. James and Joshua. Come on, somebody. Joshua 1, 8, chapter um, 1, verses 5 through 8 says, Meditate on this book. Meditate in this book day and night, and then thou shalt make thy way successful. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The anointing of God is powerful, but you're going to have to feed it. You're going to have to pray when you don't want to pray. You're going to have to push when you don't want to push. You're going to have to fast when you don't want to fast, i.e., we doing this 40 day fast. This is not easy because everybody and your mama seem like they want to take you to, to out to dinner or they want to send you coupons in the mail, all kind of stuff. Your body will start challenging you. You have to make a firm commitment. Yes, this is a sacrifice. Oh, I'm telling you right now, this is a sacrifice. But you never know what you're fasting for. You could be fasting for somebody healing, somebody's deliverance, that husband, that wife, some disease. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. That's in some of your families. Oh, hallelujah, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus. You don't understand because the Bible says this kind come out but by fasting and praying. What am I talking about? Generational choices. It's time to cut it. It's time to stop whatever's been going on in your family. Because some of you say, well, my, my family, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to speak anything because you have to be careful what you speak. God say, let it stop with you tonight, today. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You have to take charge of that thing. That means you got to call that thing out. Let me tell you what's happening. A lot of people don't want to call out stuff that's in their family. You don't hear what I'm saying. That is one of the reasons I think, just to be transparent, that mine got so mad at me. I start calling all that stuff. I start seeing out. 
Hold on. It wasn't judging. It was calling it out, saying it's not going to be in my life. It's not going to be in my daughter's life. It's not going to be in my seed. It's not going to be in her seed. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You better decree and declare what's going on around you or you don't hear what I'm saying. You got to know your authority. That's what this is about. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Luke 10, 19 says, I've given you all authority over the enemy. What's happening? The church don't even know their authority. You don't even know who you are, thus saith the Lord. But you have to walk in authority. You have to talk in authority. You have to move in authority. You have to speak in authority. Hallelujah. Like never before, you have to decree and declare. The only reason that you have not is because you speak not. You don't know your authority. I said this in a live, and I got to reiterate this. Let me tell you what God was saying. Oh, my God, this is so deep. He's making me bring this thing back. God told me this was about maybe almost a month ago. I don't know if you'll remember if you was on this live. But this is what God told me. He said, Deanna, people don't understand why I use Moses, why I use Abraham, why I use David, why I lose, use Solomon. I'm about to say something deep on here. God is a spirit, right? The devil is a spirit. Don't you know that when the when God wrote the Bible and when he made us, he said, let them have dominion over earth. You don't understand why things can't happen. Unless God can use one of us, it cannot be done because he can't go against his word. I know this is, I know this is this deep, but listen, he cannot. So he has to use a man or a woman of God. The enemy don't want you to be used by God. So he will send a distraction. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's why you have to make good generational choices. Our parents probably didn't. Their parents probably didn't. Y'all come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm saying. It can stop with this generation. Why do you think also that this generation is the hardest? I'm talking about the youngsters. I'm going to tell you why. Because our generation and the last generation dropped the ball. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. We stopped having standards in church. We start saying, well, you know, at least they coming. But what we should have did is made them sit down like our mamas, our grandmamas. Come on, somebody. Our big mom made us sit down and get, get in that Bible. Oh, no, we don't do that no more. Y'all done brought entertainment in the church. Ooh, I'm going somewhere. Y'all done brought entertainment into the church. Now everybody about to be entertained. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. I can't hardly talk. Not everybody has to be entertained. It's an entertainment spirit. You see it in the churches. You see it in the schools. You see it everywhere. And actually, where does that come from? Hollywood. You don't hear what I'm saying. So now you got, and I'm going to say it, out of 100% of church folk, you got 20% that's maybe authentic. Yeah, I said it like I said it. You can get mad. I really don't care. Because test the spirit by the spirit. You want to know what spirit people are operating in? Test it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying mistreat people. I'm not saying do bad things. But test the spirit by the spirit. And that's what's not happening. And then, let me tell you something. Oh, God, I hear you. This is how you know the spirit of offense the spirit of hate, the spirit of rage, and the spirit of attention. Those are the spirits that are operating in the church like never before, thus said the Lord. Don't you understand that if we don't come back to the oracles of God, making generational choices, hallelujah, you don't hear what I'm saying? Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, because we're not that right. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. We got to come back to the oracles of God. That's what this life is about. Come back to the auras of God. Come back to the basis of God. Learn what we learned in kindergarten. I'm going to take you back to kindergarten. When you learn to say please, thank you, excuse me, you're welcome, I apologize. We don't even do that anymore. Oh, come on somebody, Hallelujah. Get in your word like never before, thus said the Lord. Get in your word. Know who you are. Come on, somebody. It's not just about a fast. Because truth be told, oh, I need you to hear me. Some of you that's even tithing. If you are not walking in obedience, you know God can't bless you. God cannot bless no mess. I don't know who lied to y'all and told y'all just because you tied to somebody or just because of this happened or that happened, that you can get blessed. God cannot go against his word. Everything has to be in biblical order. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He didn't say perfect, but he did say. I want to I wanna challenge every last one of you that's on this live tonight. Do you know your Ten Commandments? Don't lie. Be real. Do you truly know your Ten Commandments? I'm trying to show y'all how far we have gotten away from God in the church. Do you know your Ten Commandments? I want to hear somebody say yes, no, maybe so. 
I know half of you don't know it, and I'm not trying to bash you or make you feel bad. But this because the Bible, oh, come on, somebody, keep making me grab this Bible. The Bible is not being taught. Biblical applications. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You know what? I, I, I'm i going to challenge every last one of you. Start your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Start reading your Bible. As a matter of fact, why you can't? Because I'm going to go ahead and reiterate that. Thus said the Lord I've been saying for years. When martial law comes, y'all can get mad, get mad. I don't care. It's coming. You can just wait on it. That's the first thing they're going to do is take these Bibles. I saw a vision. They're going to burn them. Y'all get mad because here's the deal. The Antichrist has come. It is his time. Whether we like it or not. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Generational choices. God said, choose this day who you will serve. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You don't hear what I'm saying. Kim Evans said, I, yes, I know mine. Well, praise God to you. I salute you because a lot of grown people don't know theirs. And and this is what I want to challenge you. Have you even taught them to your children? You want to know why the world is in disarray? Those kids don't know the Ten Commandments and they don't know God. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you something. This fast must be really breaking some bonds and some yokes. And I'm talking about it must come. I'm telling you because we still got to August 18th. And I'm not stopping. I'm not giving up. And I pray you don't. And the reason why I say that is because, oh, my God, the warfare is heavy, you guys. The warfare is heavy. But I want you to just keep on going. Don't you dare stop. And I got some other things to talk about here. Also, God wanted me to tell you, you got to pray for godly relationships. Hold on. Hold on. I'm talking about from the beginning to the end. You got to ask God for godly friends, godly husbands, godly wives. Y'all sitting up there running with messes and, and you wonder why you ain't got no message. If you hang with anybody that is not of God, I didn't say love them. You could love them from a distance. But if you are not hanging with anointed people, I promise you, you're going to be tainted. And that's what's happening. God doesn't want you tainted. God doesn't want the enemy tainting you to where you can't do what God have called you to do. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God up in here. The enemy will always send distractions. Oh, I promise you that. He'll send this one. He'll send that. He'll send this. He'll send that. Anything to stop you from having tunnel vision. Anything to stop you from doing the power of God. Having the power of God. Doing the work of God. Having the fire of God. Having the anointing of God. Where you can lay hands and truly heal and deliver somebody. Speak a word. Come on somebody that heals somebody. Even through here. Hallelujah. This stuff real. Instead of all the witchcraft that's going on. Hallelujah. And I'm talking about Christian witchcraft at that. Oh come on somebody. Hallelujah. But I got to tell you something. Something's getting ready to happen. I can feel it in my spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. The remnant is getting ready to rise in power like never before. Hallelujah to his name. But guess what? You're going to have to work for this anointing. God is not going to just give it to you because too many people are abusing his power. Hallelujah. Uh, too many people are abusing this. Man, everybody in their mama um, doing a Facebook Live. Um, Their prophet. Oh, Lord. I knew he was going to make me say this. Um, I ain't trying to be funny, but everybody's not a prophet. Mm. Everybody's not an apostle. And let me say this once for all. Oh, my God. If I get one more question about being a woman or apostle. <laughs> there were one woman that scholars say that they know of. That they know of. And her name was Junea. A woman apostle. But let's talk about Deborah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going here. I don't know why. Maybe it's one of you that needs to defend yourself. And I don't know why. All the women that did stuff in the Bible and men still tripping. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Well, you're going to keep tripping to the day I die because I ain't going to stop to the day I die. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you see me clearly? Thank you. But anyway, Deborah was one of the, she was one of the judges in Israel. I remember a verse say Barak, the king, didn't even want to go to war. He said, please come with me. She said, I'll go with you, but know that it will be that a woman have won the battle and not you. That's how powerful this woman was. And so you're going to get up on here or on my YouTube or whatever and ask me. That's the last time I'm answering that question. I ain't even lying because I don't have time to to. I just don't because what you what you don't understand. Now, this I will tell you, that's a high calling. Anybody that just want that and don't understand what it is, they got to be crazy. And, and I don't think I am. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 
Because the higher the level, the higher the devil. The higher the level, the higher the anointing. You couldn't handle half of the stuff I go through, some of you. What? I promise you. Oh, y'all know I'll be talking about the plants. And you have no idea how many times. One, two, three times I've been poisoned. Didn't die. That's right, didn't die. Hallelujah. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. People have... How many times I've lost my hair? They put Gorilla Glue in my shampoo. What? One, two, three times I've lost all my hair. My friends got mad at me. Put some Gorilla Glue in my shampoo. Can't handle my testimony. What you talking about? And I'm still preaching. And didn't get mad. Oh, I got a little mad about that one. I'm sorry. But I forgave. Hallelujah to his name. Yeah, I'm saying it. So, let's get back to what I'm saying. I pray in the name of Jesus. That those that are fasting and those that even if you're just listening, I challenge you to get closer to God in this hour like never before. Stop getting food. Stop getting played for y'all money and y'all honey. Don't act don't act like y'all don't know what I'm saying. Y'all getting with anybody just because just you're lonely. Stop that foolishness, God says. Even friendship. Check that at the door. Everybody's not your friend. Everybody don't love you. I'm sorry. Some people just want to use you, manipulate you, and hurt you. You know, thank you, Lord, I hear you. One of the things that Christians have to understand, and I and it took me it took me a minute too to understand. Christians, most real Christians have so much love in their heart that they think everybody loves them and they wanna that's not that's not reality. The truth is you will be attacked even more so because you're a Christian. And the first thing they're gonna say when you act irate, I thought you was a Christian. <laughs> I be wanting to look. Uh, I'm gonna tell you my answer. I ain't too. I'm not telling y'all to say this. My answer is this: I am, but I'm not Jesus. <laughs> okay. So, but I will tell you something right now. Get close to God. There's so much stuff coming down. Um, and I'm gonna start releasing some dust at the Lord. I know y'all know I haven't been for a minute, right? But I'm getting ready to. These people are planning a genocide. Y'all already know what's coming. Most of you know. Most of you feel it, but you're scared, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus. And and you, yeah, you better be, especially if you don't have God. Because we ain't going to be able to get on here and do this. You're going to have to hear God. Run. Stay. Trust this person. Don't trust that person. You're going to have to hear God. You ain't going to have all this media. You're going to be by yourself. Oh, thank you, Lord. I hear you. We're going back to biblical days. Y'all don't hear me, huh? We're going back to biblical days. I'm telling you what they're doing. And then why you think... I'm, I'm going to go here. Why do you think the government give away free phones? Y'all really think they want you to reach out and touch somebody? That's to keep tabs on everybody. That's all these are. That's all these are. Low key. I mean, facial recognition. Everything. Everything. But I like y'all don't know. I think y'all all know what's going down. But And, and ain't no sense in getting scared now. Just make sure that your calling is sure. Your election is sure. Make sure that you are in love with Jesus Christ. Make sure that you are in tune with Jesus Christ. And make sure you die like a soldier for Jesus Christ. Yeah, I said it. Because some of y'all are going to take that mark. I don't know why God got me going this way. Some of y'all are going to take that mark of the beast because you're scared. You better get unscared. I made up a word. You better better not fear. Because this stuff real. And I have to say this. I don't know who this is for. But he he got me going a whole different way. If you take the mark of the beast, you will go to hell. You do understand that, right? Because someone, someone I'm preaching there ain't no hell. That could be farthest from the truth. I'm telling you right now, if you take that mark of the beast, there is no saving you. You go, You better get strong in the Lord. That's the best advice I can give you. Get strong in the Lord. How do you get strong in the Lord? He, he keep having me raise this Bible up. This Bible, y'all know this. I look at it. I, I stay in this Bible, and I'm not trying to brag or nothing. I stay in this Bible. You will see it color coded and everything. I thank you, Lord. I hear you. The Word of God will keep you. The Word of God will purify you. The Word of God will heal you. The Word of God will deliver you. The Word of God will give you peace, and not like this world. Because truth be told, and I don't know why He got me going here tonight, y'all. Most people don't have no peace. Oh, come on, somebody, let's talk about it for real. Most people don't have any peace. That Bible will give you peace. Peace to trust Jesus, to trust God, to trust it. Hallelujah. This stuff is real. They ain't teaching this because they can't. They can't teach it. And the other reason is they scared. They scared because, oh, I'm going to say, because soon as you start teaching like this, you get ready for like, I don't know why God got me going here. 
you know, I'm ready for it. I don't even care. <laughs> if it's on, when it's on. What's going to happen, going to happen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who's scared? What? We weren't scared out in that world. So how is it that we're going to come to Jesus Christ and now we want to be in fear? That's what I'm tripping off. I mean, some of, let's be real. Before everybody got saved, we was doing God knows whatever. I mean, we didn't care about dying. We didn't care if we whipped somebody. But y'all know, let's, let's talk real. Let's talk for real. Let's talk for real. Now you're in the body of Christ. Ooh, ooh. And, and everything is offensive and, oh, Lord, grow up. That's what I'm going to tell you. Grow up. Grow up and get God. Who, hallelujah, I feel the power of God. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I want you all to pray, pray, and pray. Because I feel something in the atmosphere. I feel it. Something's not right. These people are always doing something. You can better believe it. So I pray that you stay strong in this hour, this moment, this time. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Um, The ones that have a prayer life, please pray for me because... I'm going to have to get off of here. Yes, yes. Um, My body, I'm having challenges. And I've never had these challenges. So, but I know God got me. You know what I'm saying? I know God got me. And um, I'm a soldier. I got on here anyway. Excuse me. So, you stay strong. Stay with God. Don't you leave God for nobody. Don't you let nobody fool you. I don't know why I'm going here. I'm, I, I didn't. A whole different message. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost, let him, let him have his way. So God bless you, God keep y'all, and I love you all. Thank you for those that have sowed into me. Thank you for those that will sow. Um, y'all know I don't be doing it like that. Oh, God, but I got to go. But God bless you. I love you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Rule our soldiers, for that is who we are. God bless.